There are five monsteras in this pot over here, so it's getting a little bit messy. What do you think? Too messy? Yeah, and overall they're just lacking a little bit of support. So today I'm going to repot this and I'm also going to give it a support, but I'm not going to give it one of my normal moss piles. And in today's video, I'll explain why. And I'm also going to address one of the most commonly asked questions I get. How do I put an established plant on a moss pile? Hey everybody and welcome to our YouTube channel. Hi, I already have the world's smallest table. Thank you. Hmm? Would you like to sit here next to me? No, you're gonna roam around. This is actually not my plant. It used to be my plant with my, I think, second last chopping extent of my variegated Monstera. I had lots and lots of cuttings that weren't really showing much variegation, so I potted them all up in one pot and I gave it to a friend um, who's not a plant person at all. So, so, you know, my friend has only like two or three plants. So I figured let's not bother with a moss pole because, you know, it's kind of too much work maintaining it, especially if you only have one, it's easy to forget about it. I have so many, it's kind of hard for me to forget about moss poles. It's, it's my job at this stage, right? And the plants have done really well in their care, but it is getting a little bit out of control. It is quite root bound over here. Some cuttings aren't even touching the pot at the moment. I don't know if you can see this, like this cutting is just hovering there. It's not even like it started here and it ends here. Same with this one over here, it's just hovering in there. So something needs to happen, let's make this nicer. I mean it's very nice and actually it's showing decent variegation like nothing crazy but you know for somebody who's not necessarily a plant collector I think this is a really healthy amount of variegation. It's not going to hold the plant back, it's not going to make the plant tricky to look after but it still adds a little bit of interest. So we're going to repot this today aren't we? Yeah we're we repotting it. Are you helping? Oh darling yes you take the table you take center stage. Are you jealous of the Monstera because the Monstera is getting more attention than you today? Little bit. So let's take this out of its pot first. Let's assess, I do think there was five cuttings in there. Let's assess what's going on. I can bring all of the cuttings a bit closer. And while I do that, I want to address that question that I mentioned in the intro. There's probably not a single day where I don't get asked how to put an established plant on a moss pole. It doesn't necessarily need to be a Monstera, but I think the Monstera is the most commonly asked one. Well, that's inconvenient, baby. How about we just look after you for five minutes and then we continue with the repot, yeah? Because after five minutes of cuddles, you're probably over it. Okay. I'll squeeze in next to you. Hey, 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 careful. You are, for such a, well, it's not the smallest baby, but for such a small, Animal, he takes up a lot of space, aren't you? Let me give you the short answer first. How do you put an established plant on a moss pile? You don't, at least not in my opinion. And let me explain why. Also, oh shit, this is super dry. The roots are going to be stuck. No, sorry, I need to water this a little bit. It's very dry actually. Oopsie. Now that's obviously gonna make a little mess, it's not my preference but for the sake of the plant it's better oh my god this is so root bound come on For once I'm actually trying to be careful because it's not my plant anymore. Oh, there we go. <sighs> Success. Yes, I know, that was hard work, huh? See, look, this is just hanging there. But look at the root ball. Yeah, this could definitely benefit from a little more room. Okay, let me free this all up because I'm gonna put a stake in the middle. So I do need to 
uh, make a little bit of room while I patiently work on that let me explain. So let's take it back to why I like to use moss poles in the first place. The moss pole is obviously mimicking the vertical support. Blah blah blah. I'm like a broken record at this stage and that's okay but the moss pole is more than that. The moss pole is also an extension of the pot so it enables the plant to root into the moss pole and create a root system within the moss pole. The more roots the better. The easier time the plant has to actually support it itself with water and nutrients and hence the more likely it is to mature faster. Obviously all based on the conditions that you provide to that plant in the first place. So right? they will always set the potential irrespective of the support that you choose. Now if you have an established plant that is not on a moss pole. What's the point in giving it a moss pole now? The moss pole is a tool to help you establish your plants. The moss pole is a tool to also potentially help you propagate but the whole idea of using the moss pole as a propagation tool is that the plant as it grows up roots into the pole and hence establishes that root system that you can then use for propagation purposes. If the plant is already established and you have not propagated it throughout or you have not air layered the plant as it grew up then you putting it on a moss pole in hindsight you could also just propagated it normally right it's not really going to make any difference. The other thing is when you put a plant on a moss pole in hindsight old nodes are less likely to root into the pole in hindsight. The plant always sends growth hormones into the newest node so the newest node is what most likely is going to attach to your moss pole. Old nodes can root into moss poles in hindsight but it is not super likely and it's most likely if you have amazing conditions like if you grow it in a greenhouse yes but if you grow it in the greenhouse then you probably also don't really need a moss pole in the first place right so yeah I'm assuming that we're growing a monstera in our living room let's say. So if you put a plant on a moss pole in hindsight, you're not actually taking advantage of the whole purpose of the moss pole. The plant isn't magically going to root into the pole in hindsight. The plant isn't going to increase in leaf size magically in hindsight. You're only optimizing the growth going forward from the moment you put it on the moss pole. So any new node can then root into the moss pole, grow a larger root system and so on. But if you put an established plant on a moss pole, it might have already reached halfway or three quarters up the moss pole. So you're basically wasting three quarters of the moss pole and by the time this plant reaches the top, the plant will not have had enough time to establish a root system into the pole for it to then be chop and extend worthy and so on. You know what I mean? Making moss poles and maintaining moss poles and keeping them moist is work, right? I'm not, never going to deny that. It is definitely work. Work that I'm willing to put in if I'm then rewarded with nice growth, the security of having an extra large root system, the propagation benefits and so on. The benefits outweigh the costs for me. But if you're only going to crystallize a quarter of the benefits but you still have to put in the same amount of effort, I don't think it's really worth it. At least in my opinion. I'm not saying it can't be done. When I get asked this question I think people expecting to get the same benefits out of the moss pulse that I do but they won't right. Um, maybe with the extension and then from there on and so on. Yes like it's not impossible but I would always rather just start a small cutting on a moss pulse and start it from the beginning and let the plant fully take advantage of it. And I'll point it out in a sec once I've got these um, freed up, right? And I think it will make more sense. Now with Monstera Deliciosa specifically, and I've done a full video on this and why I wouldn't give Monstera Deliciosa a moss pole. I think with Monsteras, especially the Deliciosas, variegated or not, I don't think a moss pole is really needed to even mature it in the first place because it grows with such short internodal spacing, it has really nice chunky roots and so on. With a philodendron vercoisum for example, completely different ball game because it is a much trickier plant to grow, a much trickier plant to root, a much trickier plant to establish a lar large root system for. Right? But with a Monstera you don't even really need the moss pole in the first place and then putting it on there in hindsight and only crystallizing a quarter of the benefits that to me just makes no sense. Alrighty let's have a look at this. First cutting. Cute. I like it. We'll put this on the side and I should really start doing these things outside. It's actually a nice day outside but it is so sunny. 
it's really hard to film with direct sun and shade and you know it's, it's hard to see things um, so I figured in here we ha might have a better chance of seeing everything. Cutting number two also a cute little root system definitely a small plant huh? but not a bad thing. Cutting number three teeny tiny was definitely left behind a little bit you know the big ones have definitely taken over but that's okay. You know, it's a nice little filler. That's what made it look so lush and bushy. Uh, these are the two main cuttings. Let me try and separate them from each other. And I hope I'm not causing too much damage here. Right. Again, they're deliciosos. They're pretty hardy. I'm not super concerned, but... By the way, you absolutely don't have to free up the roots. You could also just kind of loose up the root ball a little bit and then repot it. But I want to put a support in it in the middle and I'm worried that the support is just going to snap through all of the roots. So I want to put the support in first and then place these around the support. All right, this is a very decent cutting, very decent root system and nice plant. And second one over here, very much the same. Very decent plant, very decent root system, lots of large roots. Let's use this one as an example for why I wouldn't put this plant on a moss pole. Alrighty, so this obviously would go into the pot. I put the plant on the moss pole, done. These larger roots, yes, I can actually fiddle in here in hindsight and they can then expand into it, right? Monsieur Deliciosa will be the best candidate for this because it has these large aerial roots. This would never happen with a varicoisum, with a velvet phyllo and so on, right? But I'm using this one as an example. So yes, it can somehow root in here in hindsight, but at the same time, you can also, as done with all of these previous roots over here, take these roots and put them back into the pot. These roots will keep growing even in ambient room humidity. All you really want to do over here is make sure that this root is contributing to the water absorption. So if it makes contact with a substrate, it will be fine, moss pole or not. But we're already keeping the pot moist anyway. If I would now put this on a moss pole like this, this top node is already here, right? So definitely we would only really start seeing the plant grow into the pole properly. I'll insert a little video of my Adansonia that, uh, my Deliciosa that is on a moss pole. Mine doesn't just grow roots on the nodes. Mine grows roots throughout the stem as well, which does come with maturity, but definitely is encouraged by the moss pole being there as a support. And the moss pole then also funnels these root into the pole and then creates a larger root system of water roots that can absorb water and nutrients. That will not happen in hindsight. These will keep growing, but this plant will not start growing roots here in hindsight just because we now added a pole. You're basically faced with the issue of either having to extend or having to chop and extend or having to do something with this plant really, really quickly, even though you just gave it a moss pole. This plant, we can pot up, we can put this in a pot like that and then have this first node over here, find the moss pole and it can now start growing up this moss pile and it will now root into the moss pile. It will create the nice display side. It will have this nice, you know, all of that. This one is a great candidate for putting on a moss pile, in my opinion, right? You don't have to follow what I say, but I suppose it is my, my, my channel. So I'm going to give you my opinion. So this one is a plant I would put on a moss pile, right? If I would want to grow this on a moss pile, I think that makes sense. Then my efforts of keeping the pile moist will be fully rewarded by this plant, fully taken advantage of the moss pile. You will now see a continuous increase in leaf size from here onwards and so on. But if you're really keen to put it on a moss pile anyway, what I would do is I could, you could take a cutting, propagate this a little bit more, you know, even just in water, just so it has a larger root system and then start the cutting on a moss pile. And in the meantime, you still have the bottom of this plant that will be, that will reshoot maybe in one or two spots. So you'll then end up having two plants. So you're not just taking full advantage of the moss pile going forward, but you're also multiplying your plant at the same time. So to me, that's a win-win, but I would never take this plant and now put it on a pole in hindsight. Specifically, trialing pothos. Oh my God, let's go on a little rant while I prepare the next step. So I wanna put this on iron bark because it just needs a support. It doesn't need a moss pile. It just wants to be supported by something like a tree in nature. Now, because there's so many, I was thinking I might just group three of these iron bark poles together, like so it's nice from all sides. That's what I thought. Um, 
I just haven't really thought through how I'm gonna do this. I only have some wire available, um, but maybe that's gonna do the trick. So let's try this. Trialing Pothos range, okay. I see this happen a lot. People have a trialing Pothos and they're like, it's so long, I don't wanna lose all of the progress. And they take that long trialing Pothos and they trial it around the moss pole. First of all, in nature, you would never see a plant twirling around a tree like that. They will always grow up straight, more or less straight, right? Based on light exposure. But light is never going to circle the tree. So the plant will always follow the light and because the light doesn't circle the tree, the plant will also not circle the tree. So first of all, it's kind of unnatural for the plant to grow in circles. <laughs> Secondly, if the plant has already reached the top of the moss pole, sometimes I've seen people trial it up and down three, four times. So your moss pole is already full, but none of these nodes have taken advantage of it. Actually, hold on, I found a perfect example. Not a pothos, but a trailing plant. Let's say I take this Adansonii, and I'm like, I really want to grow this Adansonia on a moss pole so that it has nice, large leaves. I take the vine, I put the moss pole here, and now I start putting this vine on the moss pole. My plant is now reaching the top of the pole and it still looks like this. I'll put in a photo where I took a single node cutting and I let it climb up the moss pole and instead it looks like this. And then, based on the root system over there, I can do chopping extents and so on, and eventually it will look like this. You will never get this result by twisting your plant around a pole and then hoping for the leaves to increase in hindsight. That will never happen. You will most likely end up with this node at the top, now attaching over here, building a large root system, and then it's gonna grow nice leaves from here upwards. Um, so we have about two centimeters of nice growth before we're reaching the top of the moss pile. So all of the effort of making the moss pile, all of the moss is just wasted. Instead, I would take a cutting over here, propagate it and then start a single node cutting somewhere here, down here. And then let this climb up and take full advantage. Or if you don't want to, if you don't want to propagate, you can also just put this into the pot Trail the plant around the bottom over here to create a nice lush bottom part and then let the plant naturally find its way up the pole. And then you have a nice bushy bottom part and some plants growing up. That's actually most likely what plants would do in nature, right? Plants don't start off as a single node cutting in nature. They start off somewhere on the forest floor, they crawl along the forest floor until they hit the tree and then they start climbing up. Oh my God, I'm getting way too passionate about this. But I get asked a lot and it's hard for me to explain it in a text message kind of when somebody messages me or somebody leaves a comment, I always just say, oh, I wouldn't start an established plant on a moss pile. I would always start small. Right? Um, but I hope that kind of explains why. And I do think that people sometimes make that mistake and then they get pissed off about the concept of moss poles. They're like, moss poles don't work for me. They're so much work and I can't see any difference and so on. Um, yeah, because you didn't really follow the principles of the moss pole in the first place. Alrighty, I think this is good enough. I'm a bit void actually. This might be very heavy, but um, we'll find out, huh? Alrighty. It kind of looks cool, right? And the plant can root into this and I've had actually terrible experiences with Monsteros rooting into ironbark. When you want to get it off later, the roots are going to rip, um, but it's for a non-planty friend. And they're not gonna do repotting, they're not gonna do chopping extents, they're not gonna propagate this plant. They just want this plant to look good for the next two to three years. So it can grow up here and then even if it grows off the pole, it will be fine, it will look good. It will just, pu just purely based on the volume of plants I'm about to put in here, it will definitely look good, right? And that's okay. They I know that my friend has a completely different goal with their plants than I do with my plants. And I just adjust the approach accordingly. It's not about maximizing the maturity over here either. It's not, it's really about creating a nice, easy to care for um, display. And I suppose this is so much easier to care for than the moss pole because you don't have to worry about um, keeping the moss pole moist. You can go on holidays and not water this plant for probably two weeks and the plant will be just fine. 
Okay, so of course here, yes, the plant will reach halfway up this iron bark, but that's okay. It, if anything, it's almost a positive. We almost don't want it to properly root into the iron bark because those roots are going to rip when we later take it off. Let's put the second one on the other side. Oh my God, maybe I should have chosen a bigger pot. Huh? I went one up, this is 30 centimeters instead of 20. Actually, I think it's fine. And stairs really don't mind being a bit root bound. And it's okay, ne with the next repot, I don't need to make such a fundamental change. The next repot, I'll just take it exactly as it is and just give it a larger pot because the pole is now already incorporated. Huh? Beautiful. Actually, that's fine because these cuttings don't have the largest root systems. I'll just quickly put them in on the back, but I need to hold on to this pole. So you can't see this, but I will show it to you in a minute and a half. I'll just put these smaller ones around here, but I'll definitely have chosen one a uh, nicer display side, but the plants will grow all around. Okay, let me quickly top this up with air white mix so it's not all gonna fall over. And it's my normal chunky air white mix as always, and I've got it always linked in the description. It's never 100% the same, but it's mainly Bark, cocoa chips, perlite, pumice, and the water retentive component is cocoa uh, peat. Uh, but sometimes also tree fern fiber. Actually, I'm gonna try out a new tree fern fiber that Tim from Go Vertical has started stocking that is a little more affordable, and then I can maybe use it more frequently. But cocoa peat is just super affordable. <sighs> Why am I making such a mess? Oh, sh that was a workout, hey? Let me quickly clean up so I can focus. Okay, as a last step before I show you is I've got more wire. That's the front, this is the front. I'm just going to secure these uh, on here, just so they don't fall off. Just with a piece of wire. Don't make it too tight so the stem doesn't uh, get inj injured. Um, but the plant will naturally find its way onto that pole. And then I do the same with, actually this one is so small, it's just gonna hang over the edge. Same with this one, just this last one actually. I mean, that looks really good now, doesn't it? Maybe this one needs a little bit more help. So that's the positive part about the plant being dehydrated when I first started. I can now bend these, um, stems a little bit more, manipulate them to my liking without them snapping because they're dehydrated. If they're super hydrated, the chances of them snapping is much higher. So whenever I do anything plant styling related, you almost want the plant to be a bit floppy and then you water it and then it's gonna be fine. All right, now let me bring you a little bit closer so you can really see these plants and then I secured them on here with the wire. These roots, this root over here for example, once it gets longer I'll just ensure that it gets into the pot. I'll let my friend know. Same with this one, it's already long enough. I'll just put it back into the pot. And the pot is the medium that it grows into. Same with this one for example, I'll just put it in there. I've got the third one wedged in here in that corner and then the fourth one is here. Fifth one is this little plant here. Oh my god it's getting so heavy. Ooh. But I think we have really optimized these two main shoots. They look much nicer now. And of course now, once they put it in their place and it has more consistent light exposure, I also think they'll all face forward a little bit more. But I'm really, really happy with this display. Of course the plant only now has the support and can only now really take advantage of the support. And I assume that now it's going to mature a little bit faster as well. But again, Speed of maturity is not the goal over here. It's really to have a really low fuss, but beautiful setup for my friends so that they can water it maybe once every two weeks and they don't have to worry about any other fancy stuff. Let me know in the comments down below if you have decided to grow your Deliciosa on a moss pole or any other support. And I hope you enjoyed this video, like it. And if you haven't subscribed already, please do so. I would really appreciate that. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time. Bye.